All right, good to go. Okay, I figured we'd start today a little bit different. Um, seconds, all right. So just created a file for a to-do list. So I figured I'd just make like a list of goals to get done for the day and see if I can hit them in the next two hours, two and a half maybe. Uh, let's see. Um, so we have these missiles. First of all, the one missile is not oriented correctly. Uh, orient, rotate, missiles, background missiles correctly. I want to be able to, right now they only spawn at a very specific point on the x-axis, so I want them to spawn at any point on the x-axis. Um, when they go off screen, they spawn missiles to the right, like coming in from the right side only. I guess I want to be able to spawn them coming in from the left also. So maybe that's a thing. Um, background missiles can spawn foreground missiles from the left as well as right. Okay. Um, and then finally, when the when you successfully reprogram one of the missiles in the foreground, maybe this is the final, I don't know. That should spawn another missile back in the background. Um, so you're basically just like sending it back where it came from. It's the whole idea of this thing. So. Um, foreground missile. Successfully spinning. Uh, spawn another missile in the background. Um, at a desired exposition. Um, and pointing down. Okay, yeah, let's save this file. Super Sky Hero folder, that's fine. This will be our to do. I don't know if I should date it or not, but whatever. All right, one thing at a time then. Um, so I'm just reading a question on another screen. background misses correctly. I feel like that should be simple enough. So right now, looking at this screen, you can see they're supposed to be facing straight up. However, when they spawn in, they're obviously not, okay? So let me figure out why that is. So what do we got here? Let's jump over here. Why is nothing, why are no other properties showing up? Holy crap, we got more errors. Time to get sidetracked. 
So this is assuming that there are selected phase index in the settings. So I was selecting a phase from a different spawnable object that has an index much higher than this spawnable object. So normally when you switch between the two, when you switch them, it's supposed to reset that value. Uh, however, probably pressing this button doesn't do that. So edit boss missile in background A. So, right, so, if, I, so if I jump over to this one, right? Now I'm actually on the right phase index. If I, and then if I jump out to four, and then I jump back to this one, it should reset. And it does, and I'm looking at phase one again. So if I jump over here, go back to phase four, and then hit edit on this guy, then it breaks, right? So this is, um, This is game event drawer because it'll be on these two. It's the exact same. This is the same little window. Is it object spawn event data drawer? No, it's not. It's not part of object spawn. It's part of level editor. It's not part of level editor. It's none of those. Level event editor, level events window. Level event editor. I think it's this one. This looks right. Okay, so let's go back over here. Here, edit, here, edit. There it is. So this is going to have to just reset the data. Let's see if I have. What is that? What file is this? Um, settings database. So, I'm gonna need the settings database. Let's lock this guy over here. Get rid of this file. Get rid of this file. Get rid of that file. Lots of stuff to get rid of. Okay. So all I need is access to the settings database. So here where I have the object spawn database, I also want the settings database. Um, where is it initialized? It loads it here and on enable. That, um, selected phase index is just going to go back to zero. Done. And that'll stop that breaking. Yeah. 
So now let's hit this button again. And there. Doesn't happen anymore. Okay. So I'll click category, edit the prefab. It's obviously facing up. It has a rotation. However, when it's spawned, when it is spawned, I don't know what happens to its rotation. It has simple movement. It doesn't say to rotate toward direction. Maybe it should just say rotate toward direction. And that'll be good enough. And there it goes. I'm not sure why its orientation was ever um, getting reset. I'm guessing maybe the transform values were getting set based off something, something initially. Right, so just telling it to rotate toward the direction seemed to be good enough. And there they are shooting off and then coming into view. pretty good for now. Um, I'll knock this off the list. Spawn it at any position on the x-axis. This might get a little tricky because right now it's spawning on the x-axis because of this point here. It has an object spawn trigger and the trigger distance is really far to the right, meaning that when this is spawned, starting from this point, this is where it's going to be. So being able to manipulate that maybe is one way to do it. And the 6.6, .6, right, so normally what we do is something like this. So it is based off the exact center of the object. Okay, so that's not a, a thing I can undo. Apparently. Um, I guess that's fine, just setting the trigger distance. So if there's a way to update the trigger distance, basically not even caring about what this value is and just setting it manually. And where it's spawning on the y-axis is totally dependent on uh, this, I'm pretty sure. Like if I adjust this here, like down here, it's going to spawn down there. It's, and it does. So that has to be dynamic as well which it kind of is. So if I say that something can spawn something else, I can give it a random Y, like as an example, here in special, min Y, max Y, it'll spawn, something will spawn within this specific range. need something similar that represents the um, that represents the trigger distance I guess like an override So 
So this will be over in Let's see. Um, well, right now they're just being spawned from level events. Nothing else is actually spawning these things. So saying any exposition doesn't really mean anything because nothing even does that. Nothing actually spawns this thing other than this timeline. But what I really want is for an in-game object of some kind to spawn this thing. But to spawn it as a specific, like let's say it's a weapon. Let's say I add a weapon as a damage type. Its type is projectile. Maybe its type is uh, just spawn something. So the bullet itself, it could be a projectile as well, but I guess it assumes it has a bullet. So what I can do is modify projectile to just be projectile bullet. I guess projectile would be bullet. And I just add another type here to just spawn something somewhere. And that's its, uh, that's the weapon's ability. It would have similar properties to bullet, right? If I pick a bullet, apparently I can pick anything. Then it, it does have timing associated with it. But right now there's no, there's no concept of spawning it via the object spawner. It just gets instantiated at the position, at, at this weapon's position, right? Which if we go to this editor here, you'll see the position of this little circle. I can adjust it. So I guess what I want this to be is exactly what I said. I'll add another type that is to spawn objects. And it'll work kind of like this spawn object when off screen thing. You'll have to choose an object spawn and manipulate some of its values. And the seconds off screen thing is edit in scene. That seems stop edit. That is weird. That uh, th this is from something else, like here. Pick something, edit in scene. I guess. So you can edit like ranges and things. Uh, in either case. Um, yeah, this will be part of weapon. So let's remove this weapon here. No weapons. I'll have to create something. <laughs> okay, let's create. Let's spawn busy man. Busy man is going to be a placeholder. New category 131. Okay. Now we test. Spawn that's going to be spawned is. Let's see, I have Busy Man somewhere. Where are you? Oh, I have him under. Um, 
under test stuff here. Come on. Let's zoom in there. There we go. Right now he just has the animator, but I can give him an object spawn trigger. And I'll say that his is very similar. Um, it'll be something like 600. Uh, not 600, sorry, 6 point something. Whatever half the screen is. Uh, it's 1280. So. That seems good. So this will be this never works. This never works. This will be the busy man. No? Come on. Why can't I put that there? He has the object spawn trigger. Oh no, he doesn't. This thing has the object spawn trigger, doesn't it? Has to be here. Four. Okay. No warning. Mm, technically, yes, destructible, but is in the background. Does not really operate the same. I'll turn that off for now. Um, now let's make an instance of him. Oh, name test busy man one. This category busy man. Okay, he has no. Oops, no, don't delete. Okay. Nothing will actually appear here since he does not have sprite renderer. He has no movement. He has no weapons or events or anything. So I should just be able to spawn him right away. Let's take this down to just one. Spawn it later. Take one of these guys maybe. Spawn the busy man. Sync Y with spawn. There is no real Y position for the spawn. Okay, it didn't spawn, to my knowledge. Oh, probably because this is disabled. There we go. Okay, so he did spawn. There he kind of is in the clouds. Um, let's see what's wrong with him. He's definitely in the wrong position. He's also not on the 3D layer. So that kind of changes things up. So now he's back there. It's a little better. Okay. So let's just make sure that he is on the 3D layer always. His position is determined by there don't seem to be any real offsets here, okay. Spawns in a really weird position. Um, this isn't the most important part of this. Let's give him like a Z position of something negative. Are 
there too. Oh, there aren't two, but it's almost like I can see him twice. Or no, was that just a glitch in the camera? For like a second, it was rendering both. Just because it's the Unity editor. I guess it's fine to have him that far in the back. Uh, let me figure out what the term is really quick. What? And why he's not? He's not moving correctly because he has this object spawn movement. And these positions are all vector twos. So his Z position will never be not zero. So I can probably modify that at some point. It's not really a big deal right now. So I'll leave him where he is. Because of where he is, this I want to get him somewhere more center. Let's just update this trigger distance to something less severe. Just five. And that's pretty damn close to the center. Okay. Let's get it right underneath the, the score text. Because I believe the score text is directly in the center. Good enough, all right. Now what he's going to do is actually spawn these missiles. So I'll have to add to what I think is weapon data. Scripts. Under game data, bullet data, gun data. I think it's called gun data instead of weapon data. All right, so projectile blast laser. I'll put this one. I'll put this one. Okay, uh, laser. I have some properties for object spawn, which are just really object spawn phase spawn data. Spawn data. So one thing I want to add is override or not really override exposition random uh, exposition. Trigger distance, trigger distance, um, trigger distance, max, I'll 
I'll set that to min and use the min when it's not randomized. Something like that. Same as with these guys. So then there's a drawer for this in level editor, object spawn, phase, spawn data drawer. Here, there. Uh, push label width 50. Nice. If I also need to do put it into the copy. range things here. Here our window now. Busy man. Let's give him a weapon. Well, the weapon doesn't have it yet. But if I look at like a spawn here, it has. Ah, okay, this is all the same. Row. This is not what I want. don't want this label with to be tiny this should be like 100 but it shouldn't be <laughs> the reason I did it hold on let's see what it looks like okay so that's kind of how I want it if anything, I should only do it here. And then just don't do it there. I think. So if it's now ranged, then goes off screen. So then I have to do it 
This shouldn't be 100. This should be 50. Otherwise, don't set a default label with. Pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. It'll only go off screen if I make it too small. Because this one is not part of the label width. I can just make a dist and do this range. Just make it all short. And do the same thing. Just fine. Okay. Okay, let's move this, and now we have to make it appear as part of a weapon. Not damage type, but it'll be a type of object spawn. And if we have the guy. I guess it never draws it, huh? Oh, I guess because it needs something here. We'll see. Um, I don't think it'll work though. I think it requires a bullet in order to draw. So at that point, this is being drawn in I don't think I have a weapon data drawer. This is probably just object spawn editor window. And let's go to weapons. Weapons tab. Add weapon. Weapon drawer. There it is. Okay. So if it's projectile, do all this stuff. Um, And if it's a laser, do all that stuff. And if it's an object spawn. Do all this other stuff. Uh, this will really just be the object spawn phase data. Phase spawn data drawer. Spawn, phase, spawn, data drawer. Yeah. Uh, window, the, I think I need a ref for it, uh, data.a spawn data. The database, and a list, which may or may not be there. don't have the database I could pass in the database database Just leave it that. and then this reference is broken now Small database. Yep. Cool. Making some progress. Ugh. Okay. So, damage type, type, object spawn. 
it's not actually drawing because it's null. So if I have to draw it, I'll just make sure it's not null by gun data, instantiating it. And then that should be good enough. Might have to delete this weapon. Nope, okay. Let's pick one. We're gonna spawn the background missile. Spawn the background missile. <laughs> or not. What's up, Dave Winsands? How about Dave? Do people call you Dave? Why not? What is happening when I select a different one? Did I not copy it? Of course I didn't. Equals to be at a distance of 5 point, what was it, 2, 5 or something. Um, let's, let's actually make it a range. So let's do that minus a half, 4.75, and 5.75. Spawn one. This doesn't really have any like timing information. Which we'll probably need. Similar to a projectile, I'll need this data. Except it'll be like well, it'll be like the exact same information. Except the projectile is now an object spawn. Um, let's go to the weapon data drawer then and just ask for a bunch of this information. Pretty much this. Uh, maybe ammo count. Not right now. Let's do uh, so we have spawn data, spawn info. Second, that seems good enough. Let's do it every five seconds. Okay. And some random distance and with a Y position of whatever my Y position is, um, which would be something like five or four point two five. 
Son de Almost time for a coffee refill. Save all that. Um, this will be in the the actual gun that gets instantiated. So not just gun data. Data drawer. Movement, we're not in movement anymore. We don't care about player. So this is still in game under gun. So what I'll have to do is save the. I think it just saves the weapon data somewhere. Like it copies over the entire weapon data. Does it not? Right here. Gun data. And so what I'll need then is gun data has the spawn info. So maybe that's enough. So I'll do something similar to the bullet. Projectile. Um, or it's also now a uh, object spawn that'll spawn on a timer, waiting for shoot time, waiting for cooldown time. And this is when it actually tries to fire. If it's a projectile or a blast. It checks if it's charging. What else? Alright, gun data. Oh. Weapon data. Between bullet timer here. So I can do the same thing. This is only for charging. So do the same thing. Don't call shoot. Uh, if bullets per shoot counter is greater than that. Now we're going to go ahead and spawn. Spawn data, this will be weapon data, spawn data, spawn category. Is that within spawn data? D, I have to get the ID. It has object spawn data ID. And I thought created one of these that could just take IDs instead. Because now I'm going to need the spawn database, I think. Let me uh, think about this real quick. Um, spawn movement is doing this. Okay, uh, here I have gun. It's in like level object spawn movement. So it has the spawn data object. Uh, object spawner. It doesn't do that. It, it, it does it by firing the event, doesn't it? Fire object spawn event. No, that's not what it is. Do object spawn, and that's where it does it. Object spawn phase data, get spawn phase from list. That doesn't matter. 
this is what I'll be doing. This spawn is just spawn data. Or weapon data, that spawn data. That's uh, object spawn data. It's not object spawn data. So this is a base data. Base spawn data. <laughs> um, yeah, random right route range, min and max. So here we have spawn object default x. So what's different about this one? It has an actual position you can pass in. You can spawn an object at a specific position. Let's look at object spawner. Spawned at a specific position. Um, position, here it is. It does put it there. I guess this is, and then a Y offset. Okay. Oh, right, that's the Y offset for each successive spawn in the list, in case you're spawning more than one at a time. So I can't spawn it off position, so why don't I just do that? Instead of using this, um, what I can do is Phase data. Instead of doing this, either that or calculate it based off of this. So I have a y position, and this is basically my x position. So I'll just do this as I should probably just do this in a friendly way. Um, here, position in, position out. And then I'll do the exact same thing. Data ID, count, delay, Y offset, and then position instead of Y. Y. Why is this being weird? I mean, potential fixes. Why would I change it? Why would I change it to X position min? Why? 
Visual Studio. You don't know what you're talking about, man. No more suggestions like this. Yes. Thank you. Okay, now that I have that capability, that should be all I need, honestly. Although the exposition specifically is now kind of wrong that I'm using. So now what I'll have to do is actually take this guy and set his object spawn trigger distance to be zero. And here, uh, the editor still says dist. Um, so this is going to be min x, min y, uh, x position. And is that also in a range? I can take out this push label. I can take a uh, pop label. Min. you not get saved? Did this not get copied? Um, it did. All right, let's make one here. Um, so I had it at like 5.25. It was also in a range. Why did that not save? See if it saves when I like make a change or something. Let's see if it switches back to the range being not unchecked. It doesn't. Okay. So something else was bugging out. That could have been before I did the copy thing. Um so the actual screen width is uh, 12, eight, which is 6.4 is 12.8 width. So minus 5.25, right? Just grab our calculators, 12.8, so 7.55, so 7.05 to 7. Point, uh, to 8.05. That'll be the range. Hopefully. Hopefully I'm right about that. Um, by the way, some of this stuff is gonna get changed to be, since this guy is in 3D, he's like 3D on 2D. It'll, I'll have an option here that says like spawn at, this object position, but then also have to convert the coordinates from 3D to 2D. Not sure if you can see that here. If I press play, you can see he's kind of like a 3D guy over there. Um, oh, wait a second. I didn't have to change his thing. Okay, hold on. His positioning should still be the same. Where is he? Oh, right, he's, he's, he's spawned. Um, so he can still be at, um, uh, what was it, 5.25? Right, and that puts him in the spot. Okay, 
So then what I want them to do is actually spawn these other things. Um, let's see if at least that works. This is right now a little scattered, but um, let's see if the info saved this time. Yeah, it's still there. Okay, uh, let's see if we ever hit the attempt. Wait, hold on, this is object spawn movement. Let's get rid of this guy now. Let's get rid of these drawers. I just want gun. Gun, do you ever want to spawn an object? Okay, he gets spawned, and then at some point, he does not spawn anything. Okay. So, let's even see if... Does he even have a weapon? He does not. So then... What instantiates the guns? The fact that he has to have a ship or something like that? All this stuff was like making assumptions that things would be specific things, and now they're not being specific things. I could make them a ship that doesn't move. Um, it just feels weird to do that. So yeah, where are you attaching weapon data? Um, I think it's just when you load the movement phase, right? So like load, move, load initial movement phase. Does he get the uh, movement script attached? He does. Okay. Which loads movement phase and then uh, load guns if it's a ship. Um, why? Why can only the ship load guns? Because. It doesn't seem to be anything special about the ship. It just instantiates a bunch of guns. It only has one reference. Uh, for every gun, destroy. If it should be destroyed during object spawn, then destroy it. Um, otherwise, enable it, and then instantiate all the other guns. So, there should be no reason that this can't just be directly on the object spawner here. Not the object spawner, the movement. Sorry, let's go back here. And we're just gonna drop this thing right here. Uh, not even care about if it's a ship. Load the guns. Um, okay, weapons, create weapon from phased it in weapons. Create weapon. Weapons was being passed in. That, that's what it was. This is phase data by weapons. Yeah, okay. That was being passed into the method before. We're cool. Um, all right, that's movement, that's guns, this is events, events. Weapons, movement, 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 movement stuff, movement, weapons, events, spawns, 
and special. This is also a special thing. And then other. Okay. Now you don't have to be a ship. And if this will at least spawn something, right? If in gun this breakpoint gets hit. Happy. Let's do something real quick. Okay, he got instantiated. He has a game object. It's a gun. All right. All right. It doesn't have. It has weapon data. It's an object spawn. Uh, it has spawn data with the spawn data ID with all this data. Sweet. Is it going to hit the breakpoint? Is it waiting five seconds? Is it doing anything? It would seem like it's doing nothing. Um, <laughs> missile hit me. Um, let's try and get some percentages. There's nothing that makes it seem like it wouldn't, so... Um, let's see if we're even hitting this breakpoint. I can't see why we wouldn't. Unless there are some other factors preventing that. Timers aren't moving. I guess that's concerning. Cooldown timer is not going down. Okay, so. Cooldown timer. So I should be hitting here at least. Yeah, like immediately. Uh, oh, that's because this is applies to all kinds of guns. Um, let's specifically say if it's object spawn. So conditions. Weapon data type is object spawn. Right. happened here to this frame rate. Unity's blowing up. 200 millisecond frames. What the hell? It's because of this uh, breakpoint? <laughs> Is too much to handle? Let's just do a stop really quick. See if that helps. That does help. Okay. Let's retouch the debugger. Do I still have the city stage? Um, I have it. <laughs> it's still there. It's going to be there, but it's going to get revamped um, to a significant degree. Like I said, now that um, Julio's able to get on top of redoing a lot of the assets, not only is he just, you know, touching them up or something, he's also um, creating more and together we're coming up with better ideas for how things can look, 
how you can actually move through um, a level that has parallax background to make it look, to give it a better sense of depth. So, so like a lot of, a lot of stuff like that is being taken into account. So, yeah. So it should come out like drastically different, drastically different. You like in feeling for yeah what the background even can be. No, apparently, apparently this breakpoint is like destroying the frame rate of Unity. And I just want to know what type this thing is. Let's turn the condition off. It's not the condition. Okay. Ah, uh, we're gonna have to kill. We have to kill stuff. Reboot stuff. All right, let's do that. Yeah, I want to stop debugging. I guess. All right, can I kill this? Yeah, I can kill. All right, well, let me just make sure everything's saved. You never know. All right. Let's go to Unity Hub. Relaunch the project. And while that's happening, while this fun meter is going up, I'm going to go refill my coffee and be back in just a couple minutes.
All right. Looks like Unity started up. The owl who was God. I'm not sure I know what you mean by that. Okay, let's get Visual Studio back up and running. What script? I was in the gun script. still have this crazy problem. Okay. Attach to Unity. Be a debugger. Be a good debugger. Okay, I'm hitting stuff, but that's because I removed the condition. Let's put it back. Actually, still actually getting hit. No, it's projectile. So the condition wasn't even valid. Ah, Open data. Okay. Gun type. Is this? It breaks the debugger. I mean, it doesn't break the debugger. Like it causes the debugger to break Unity. Five FPS. Either way, where's my guy who's supposed to be spawned? What level is this? This being enabled did not save. That's interesting. Does he still have his weapon data? Yeah, he does. Okay. Okay, he spawns, whatever. Um, it's not hitting here. It's not at all? Is it not, is there something that's supposed to set like the gun to be active? That's like a thing, right? Not shooting active, do just in case cleanup. That's gonna happen, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So what the hell does this do? Okay. And then it just keeps returning. figure out which one I am and yeah well it's this new game object I can look at a parent but pretty sure I mean I can look at weapon data that'll tell me more and it is object spawn type okay so nothing is setting shooting active the thing that's supposed to set shooting active Spawn movement. So this sets shooting active. Why doesn't this set shooting active? I feel like it should. In use is true. In you what the hell is it between in use and shooting? not in use return <laughs> I mean I 
it's not shooting active, it doesn't. It wants to do even less. And then, if something's in use, then it's allowed to do this other stuff. Like in use, like I, I feel like that pertains to mostly the player. Like if I'm actually pressing a button. Something like that. Or if I have multiple guns, they all have shooting active, but only two of them are in use. Then the other ones still have, like the cooldown timers for them still work. Something like that. So that when you go to fire them again, they're reset. Uh, I think that's what that was supposed to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and set them all to in use. Because when a ship set guns player input, right, it's setting them to in use. It's setting one to in use and the rest to not in use. But if I'm a different ship, Guns in use is by default set to false. So what is allowing? Let's see, in use. That's it. Set by Object spawner is doing it. This isn't doing it. Well, in use is true, but shooting active is never set to true for any of these. So maybe the ship is doing shooting active. Shooting. Shooting active. For all my guns. Oh, that's when player enters the thing. And that's it. Shooting active equals false. Shooting active. Set guns shooting. Set guns. Who's calling this? Ah, it's based on it's based on the movement. So the movement would be doing that. Um so what I could do is just add part of the uh, movement phase. add an event right away. So by default, guns aren't active unless you tell it. So like on start, enable shoot, done. Okay, saved. Now we got something happening. And it's gonna shoot right away. Let's see if we don't explode right here. Spawn down there. Okay. Why are there three? There's one over there. There's another one spawning. It's always spawning way over here. messing with these positions. Let's look again. OK. 
Okay, X, 7.05. 4.25. The actual x is going to be 7.1. Right, okay. Y offset is 0, spot delay is 0 2, spot can be It's going to do object spawn. Who's listening for object spawn to level and make manager, right? then it does something like trigger distance. Otherwise, just position. So we're gonna hit this. We're gonna hit this actually. There it is. 7.1, 4.25. Position, lock position with spawn bases. Probably set the pulse or something. Yeah, the force waves. Create new game objects. Make a spawner. Play by offset. This does set the position of the spawner. Which means. Oh, it's just getting offset by its stupid spawn trigger. Yeah, there's no issue. I am convinced. Kind of. Okay. I am kind of convinced. So let's go over to um, this background missile and edit it because of the spawn trigger. Set so far away. I'll just set it to zero. I'll handle that. Save this and play again. There, they're spawning in weird position. No, wait, never mind. That was the other one. That was this one, right? Yeah, let's uh, remove this one. All these guys can get removed. Okay, now we're in the correct range. There's. Yep. Should be somewhere in this range. X. Okay, yeah. So I can get them at any X position now. Spawning in missiles. <laughs> oh man. Shit. It's pretty tense. If I just take it slow, there it goes. Oh god. Alright, now it flew off screen. I successfully got one. He's just gonna keep spawning them. So this is pretty good. All right, let's go back to our little to-do list. Spawn missiles at any point on the x-axis. That's good. And I could have the bonus of spawning them from a weapon instead of just having to do it. However, uh, background missiles can spawn foreground missiles from the left as well as the right. So, that's kind of similar, that's kind of similar. So if I go to the actual background missile, it has a special here that spawns when it's off screen, something at some Y, some Y value. But if I want the x value to also 
be random. So right now it's going to always pick X. It's actually picking no X because because it's not even taking this into account. So what I could do is say Instead of a, of an exposition, add the fact that I can sit, just say instead of actual exposition, have a drop down list. That seems correct. So I'll have a drop down list, right? Gun data. Instead of specifically, it's not gun data. Um, it's not here. I'll need this though. I need to because I'll need to edit this. So I'll actually need the data. The um, object spawn phase weapon data, which is actually uh, object spawn phase spawn data. Object spawn phase spawn data. Object spawn phase spawn data. So not only this, but also I'll have some kind of a type. Could add a random chance to that. Um, and then manual. And this is like the variables for manual. And then the only other thing that needs a real variable is. I'll actually need the type, so exposition type. Exposition type. Um, I think these are serialized by default. Float, and this will be the actual random chance of appearing on one side over the other. So exposition random. Copied. Actually, here in this drawer is the answer. So this gets a little trickier. So 
Now I want to push this label with and pop this label with again in the other places. And here. Do that again. Do that there. So, um, enum, edit enum. Only if it's really like manual, then do this. Um, where is this complaint? Something is off here, right? some helper text to that. Just pick left or right side. Um, help box type dot warning. Anything. <laughs> A specific radio station or the entire radio feature? God, is that what that's in reference to again? So confused. 1980s Proverbs. 1980s Proverbs. That's a radio station? Only available on Winstands Virtual Radio. <laughs> Man, you should just release that. slider instead. 
They wouldn't do anything. Can we make a radio app? With your own radio stations? <coughs> Unless you mean like, would they shit their pants and think it's really amazing compared to what they have? Probably not. Because they could make their own radio stations. Well, in-game radio stations, they're not real radio stations. Okay, that's good enough. Let's see what this looks like now. So, exposition type is screen right. by default, and if I make it screen left, if I do screen both random, what is with all this empty space? Oh, it's the stupid help box because it's part of the row. Um, so let's do a row here. And an end row here. And here I won't do a begin row, end row. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I won't. Um, I'll select the type. And then if it's this type, it's all in one row. Otherwise, it's not all in one row. So, determined, determined, determines. Literally less than five side-scrolling shooter Metroidvanias in the market. Uh, I haven't seen any yet that I have actually bought and played. I don't think so anyway. So we'll do 50-50 right now. So finally, this is actually taken into account in objects when it has to actually spawn this thing right here. So there's the Y. And this is not gonna have default X anymore. Actual position. Uh, position. Uh, zero to one position. Or I can just do this, not do y position. Just set it to zero, I guess. Or no? What is default X? I'm guessing this is going to be like some crazy um, 
or if it's random, then do kind of the same thing. If to pick a random number. Yeah, got a random float. float random x is uh, oh, random yeah random dot range zero two one Inclusive, okay, one. Zero, F, that. If random happens to be less, sorry, if on my off screen, dot random weight is less than the random number. Because if I want a 90% chance of it spawning to the right, then if the number is less than or equal, it's going to fall within that range. Else, spawn right, spawn left. So what I can really do is just overwrite these values. Right, so I can do this. Like if it's random both, then just set one based off of this. Are you so far to the left? To the right. Um, then overwrite it with the right. Otherwise, overwrite it with the left. Check one of those two. Um, otherwise, if it's manual, else if say manual, then I'm just going to be looking for the range thing. min and then if x random then spawn x is range the max to the min uh, min Is that I hope save changes okay so I set it to screen both random let's just see what yeah, I'm kind of curious what would happen if it always spawns to the left, right, left goes negative world size x. Let's get out of here. Um, what is this? Is this the object spawner? It is. I see boss missile in the background. It's just another one that got. Oh, it's not destroying itself? Why 
or it has to be off screen for X amount of time. Spawned a missile way over there. Okay, that looks about like negative world size dot x. So then why does zero make it appear on the right? Let's see what happens. Maybe if it's set to zero, it does something. Okay, it spawns it at zero, or what is seemingly zero, minus the... Minus the trigger distance. Okay. So then this should just be wall size then. Here I want it to spawn not only that, but I want it to move the opposite direction. So that I need it. I need some of its values like speed to be flipped. I need it to follow min direction x to be flipped. Okay. I need a way to like flip a movement. Either that or load it with a different phase that has a movement, a different movement. That seems dumb. I can have movement have two movements, one for left, one for right side. One spawned in from the left, one spawned in from the right, one spawned from the top, one spawned in from the bottom. Especially for each of the phases, because like this one, its speed is again two, so it'd have to iterate through all of its phases and modify all of its movements to have a left side counterpart. Right now I'm gonna see if a simple flip will take care of it. So what's gonna happen here is when we're actually doing a spawn object, the object spawn, which is here, going to have to know whether or not this is going to get flipped. Right? I have to be careful with this.
Although I think I can also make another missile that's the same that comes in from the left. And then when you're spawning stuff going off screen, you can spawn one of two random things and one could be the left missile, one could be the right missile. And that just defeats uh, all the other things that I just did, so. Gonna have to make a choice here. And I think I'm just gonna go with the flip and see how that goes for now. Although I do like the other way too. Um, so I'm gonna need the ability to flip here for initial disposition. Flip movement X, right? That's what I said. Flip movement X. Uh, for sure false. Most likely for testing phase positions. What's gonna happen here is bar not spawn flip move x is spawn or flip move x, right? I guess I can call it the same. to be a thing, then I have the spawn data here, right? Spawn data. I actually don't need to save this variable then, because I can just do all of it right here. Oh no, no I can't. I need that to happen after. <laughs> after, otherwise it's gonna edit the actual data. So once something's actually spawned, this object spawn movement is gonna get its movement phase loaded. Am I holding onto a copy of the data? So instead of having the actual data, I can have a copy of the data. Hmm, <laughs> two hours. Yeah, man. It's a good one. Um, so where am I setting these things? So I think I can just copy them. All right, copy. Let's copy the category. Oh, no worries, man. Thanks for hanging out. Sorry, dude. My apologies. So then I don't need this other flip movement thing. So now that I've actually, if I actually do have copies of the spawn data, I can just edit this spawn data object now. Because that means that everything got copied. So I can flip everything. So let's see if that's even a possibility. Let's see if that's simple enough. variable. OK. 
Okay, so now, given the spawn data that I have, spawn data has like phases, right? Okay. sure I'm going to track that. Follow player constant. Um, so one thing is that it, the spawn trigger will have to be flipped. So that's weird because that's inside So then I will need this, right? Spawn with movement plus. again. Spawn with X. Because I'll need that later when I decide where to spawn them. Trigger distance. Object spawn position x is minus this. Otherwise, uh, if flip x, flip, then object to spawn position dot x plus equals spawn spawn dot trigger. Yeah, it'll be on the opposite side. Okay. On top of that, when it's actually spawned, the game object is going to have like a. It's going to also be flipped. We'll see. We'll see how this goes right now. I probably have to flip the game object. But let's see, uh, the speed will be flipped. Um, phase dot speed dot move data, move data dot speed will be negative. Movement data dot fault, no. What are these things called? Um, Follow min direction x, follow max direction x. Well, it's direction, right? So I'm just going to flip them. So the max direction is going to be negative, the min direction is going to be positive. That also doesn't make sense. I'll just make them equal their opposites. Right, so if max is 0.5, min will become negative 0.5. Um, so, right, I need to store first the max, uh, max, uh, data dot max direction. that 
so one of the data uh, now I can overwrite max direction dot x equals negative min direction phase min direction x equals negative That should be enough. And now it'll be follow only when x is greater instead of follow only when x is less. In phase uh, follow player when x greater than phase follow when x greater than false. And phase follow when x less is true. Else. Adjustment is the same. Rotate toward direction still makes sense. So let's look at that. Okay, so now I just need to be able to, to call flip on it. So I need to do object spawn, should now allow for flip. tracker in there I will grab what I got from here and do do spawn flip X. So now this is back to what it's supposed to be. That actually only happens, All right? So this is going to be uh, false, 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 flip movement x. Flip x is false, and when I'm coming in from the left, Target direction is zero, the min direction negative one, the max direction of zero. So does that actually update? Movement phase start position, movement position. Oh, it's moving back to its starting position. It's movement phase start position is actually 13 and seven. data direction negative one in direction max direction 
Direction update speed, target speed, actual speed. Is it trying to get into position or something? And it hasn't actually started? Is that what's happening? Right, I'm guessing we're not even here yet. Right. Uh, because we're still here. Uh huh. Distance from phase start. Distance from phase start. equals in load movement phase phase position phase data dot preview position dot x minus trigger distance okay spawn offset for movement which is nothing it's using the preview position dot x which is going to have to be Flipped plus spawn trigger dot trigger distance. Phase position should just be the position. If maintain direction. Lock position with movement phases. If not initialized, if not lock movement, then it's just movement minus phase position. Otherwise, it's nothing. Spawned offset. And then phase position plus the offset. Oh boy. Okay. Phase position. When a phase is loaded, it has a phase position. By using Spawn data gets set when? Here, it loads in spawn data from load initial, at which point it uses the saved spawn data here, which has updated values. So I can move the preview position. Preview position x. Um, let's see. Let's see how far off it is from the. Why doesn't it just use? The position that it's supposed to spawn in. when it spawns. Um, movement offset has some offset. Lock position. Movement phase initialized. Equals pre-initialized position. I can set it to a pre-initialized position. And then the movement phase will be initialized. And then it'll just do 
the same kind of thing though. And then position match previous phase end. Which will set it to zero zero. I don't think that's gonna do anything if I do ma if I do movement phase initialized. And then it loads initial movement phase. initialized position. Um, where it's actually, I oh know this is in a totally different spot, so I'm like way up here now. Uh, which one of these is which? Pre-initialized position is one of the very last ones. This will also be next. Like I said, I don't think that's going to do anything. Right, continue. I guess I'll have a breakpoint somewhere. Pretty sure it has to do with this. Setting the phase position to the preview position X. It's also subtracting the spawn triggers. The spawn trigger trigger distance. So it'll have to know to add that. Unless I take it into account when I'm doing this flip thing. This flip thing is becoming less and less this attractive. Um, so we'll say uh, the, uh, the difference in X. Phase uh, preview if X is actually phase position X minus take into account that it's going to be it's going to also have added on but what I can do is the trigger distance. Okay. Only because the trigger distance is negative, right, off from that, so it's actually being pushed over. So then the difference is going to be the expected minus the world size 
with the world size minus. Oh no, this is the difference, like how far to the right of the world size is. So actually, now the uh, phase that x will now equal the uh, phase preview. Negative. Um, so if it's six units, to the, if it's like one unit to the right because of the trigger distance, it's now going to be negative one unit to the left. And then when it subtracts the trigger distance, it's going to be negative one minus like negative 0.5. So it's going to move to the right a little bit. So it's going to be at zero, I think. this movement phase start position is 13 again even though I updated the preview position movement phase start position position, maybe I can just get this here. actually does anything. Something is way off because it, it is getting spawned on the opposite side of the map, but nothing is being flipped. Flip is not even happening. Flip is not. All right. necessary. It's not even getting flipped. Object spawn movement. I'm gonna have to check what flip is. I'm sure it's set to true. It is set to true. Flip movement X is now set to true. And then it's gonna fire and get caught here. Flip with the axis here. The 
is set to false. Even though when I called it just now. Wait a second. Ah, okay. I was totally forgetting about an entire variable that wasn't being used. This is just going to be set to choose. Um, pre initialized position, pre initialized position, and then flip with an X. So now we're actually going to get the X flip and see how much of a difference we have. That's expected. Now we're flipping. Expected preview position is getting updated to 0.5. Negative 0.5. And then it's going to flip all these values. moving left. Why is it now moving left? Target speed is one. Does that have anything to do with it? It shouldn't even use a target speed, but because update speed to target isn't getting used. Max direction is one, min direction is zero. So these values got flipped correctly. Um, so why are you deciding to go that way? Now I know that you're at least here. No, sorry. You're in follow player constant. So you're here. So we're going to step on and hope you don't get destroyed. Follow player when x is greater is false. Follow player when x is less is true. And my x position is less. So follow is true. The difference x is 3. Is it less than the negative threshold? It is not. Is it greater than the threshold? It is. Uh, direction to player.x. Direction to player. Is 0.8. My current movement direction is 0.9. And yet I'm still moving to the left. Oh, right. The speed isn't supposed to get flipped. The speed depends on the direction. The speed should always be positive. But because the speed was negative, so don't flip the movement speed, dude. So it's gonna spawn somebody to rotate toward me. And now there it is. Coming in from the left. Can I jump on it? I can. Let's see what could possibly go wrong there. shoot off to somewhere and there it goes behavior is very similar I like it um, 
doing the flip. It's attractive enough. We'll see how well it works into the future. I still do like the idea of having uh, a different movement for the left than the right, or even a different spawn for the left than for the right. So. Now let's see if this weighted uh, random value will actually uh, do something. So we have the background missile. It will special spawn random 50-50. see what happens. From the left. Uh, from the left. From the left. Within reason, all right, we're getting to a really low percentage chance that that could actually happen. Okay. So now when it's actually spawning from off screen, it's always deciding on left for some reason. Uh, let's see what this random range turns out to be. Zero one. What did we get? 0 0.09. That's pretty low. If it's less than random, it should go to screen right. Okay. This is 0.5. Okay. Are you telling me all the values are going to be that low? Three. This is just really bad luck, right? Point 0.98. Okay. Now for sure we hit screen right. Screen right. Okay. So now. Wait, should I be overriding these values? Yes. Spawn X is world size. And it doesn't do flip movement or any of that stuff. Oh, it did. It literally, they were all just coming in from the left by crazy random percentage chance. Now they're coming in from the right a lot. And the left. Okay. The right of this works. Totally cool with this for now. Got some fun obstacles. Alright, um, let's go back to the to-do list. When foreground missile leaves the screen, spawn another missile in the background. Add a desired X position and pointing down. Whew, man. Um, I'll probably just do another spawn when off screen thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm alright with that. I'll, I'll make that the first thing I do uh, next stream. Uh, this has been pretty good so far. There's a lot more involved than I thought it would be. I honestly thought all this would take an hour less, but anyway, everybody, everybody who joined, thanks for hanging out and uh, catch you another time.